Your body communicates with itself both electrically and chemically. Your nervous system, which includes your brain, spinal cord, and all of the nerves, will use electrical and chemical messages to allow you to move, smell, see, feel pain, and think. The nervous system is an internal communication system. The main cell of the nervous system is the neuron. The neuron transmits nerve impulses, which are electrical signals, and then it sends chemicals to the next neuron across a very small gap between them. The typical neuron has the same basic features. The cell body contains the nucleus and many organelles and has long tendrils projecting from it called dendrites. These dendrites pick up signals from their environment or other neurons. A signal will travel from the dendrite to the long axon. Some axons can be even several feet long. The axons carry the signal to the end of the axon, often called the axon terminal, where messages are then sent in the form of chemicals to the next cell. A nerve impulse travels very quickly, about one meter per second. But many nerve fibers have a way to transmit signals up to 100 times faster. Special cells, called Schwann cells, will grow around the axon in wrapped layers like a cinnamon roll. Each wrap creates a coating of myelin and phospholipid bilayers, which act similarly to an insulator on an electrical wire. In between each Schwann cell is a small gap of exposed axon called a node of Ranvier. These nodes are important for speeding up the impulse. In a myelinated axon, the electrical impulse jumps quickly from node to node instead of moving continuously along the length of the axon and impulses can travel up to 100 meters per second. A neuron transmits nerve impulses through itself, but when it's time to send a message to another cell, most neurons will send chemicals to the next neuron across a very small gap between them. The junctions between neurons and the next cell are called synapses. There are three major types of cells that neurons will form synapses with. Sensory receptor cells, other neurons, and effector cells. A sensory cell could be part of the eye, ear, nose, skin, or any place where senses are used. This sensory cell is connected to the skin and will pick up pain sensations. The pain message may be sent to another neuron that could be part of the spinal cord or brain. These intermediate neurons are also called interneurons. The message can then be sent to a cell that will have an effect on another cell, so they're called effector cells. In this example, the effector cell is going to signal a muscle cell, which would move this area of skin away from the source of pain. These three cell types together make a simple reflex arc, going from sensation to the central nervous system to an action. The chemicals released into the synapse are called neurotransmitters. Many neurons have a very small fluid-filled gap between the presynaptic cell and the postsynaptic cell. This gap is called the synaptic cleft. It's a really, really tiny gap. Now that we know some of the basics, we can look at the steps of synaptic transmission in more detail. First, a nerve impulse in the presynaptic neuron reaches the end of the membrane. This causes calcium ions to diffuse into the cell through channels in the membrane. The influx of calcium causes vesicles with neurotransmitters in them to move and fuse to the cell membrane. The neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft by exocytosis. They diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. The binding of neurotransmitters triggers sodium ion channels to open and pass the threshold potential. The action potential is propagated along the postsynaptic neuron. Then the neurotransmitters are broken down and removed from the synaptic cleft. If there isn't enough neurotransmitter binding to receptors, then there won't be enough sodium flowing into the cell to reach threshold potential. This means that there is an all-or-nothing response. Either there is enough neurotransmitter to start the action potential and the impulse is sent, or there is no impulse. 
In this case, there was not enough neurotransmitter release to trigger an action potential. So the neurotransmitters will be broken down and the sodium potassium pumps will restore resting potential in the postsynaptic cell. There are many different types of neurotransmitter, but we'll look at just one in more detail right now, acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter is made of an acetyl group and a choline, which must be combined together in the presynaptic cell before it's packaged into a vesicle. Then it can be released into the synaptic cleft. After acetylcholine binds with a receptor, it is rapidly broken down by acetylcholinesterase, an enzyme that's present in the synaptic cleft. The acetyl group and choline can then be reabsorbed by the presynaptic neuron and combined again into acetylcholine for reuse. 